Hi everybody, Mike from the Digital Media Lab. Here today we're at part three of creating our composite image. We're gonna grab the cloud, so let's go to File, Open, and we're gonna select our landscape.jpg, which you'll find in the images provided. All right, once I open that up, I'll use my Alt key and the mouse wheel to kind of zoom in, and then the space bar to bring up my hand tool. All right, in previous movies, we used the quick selection tool, and what it does is it likes to see nice, sharp edges. So it looks for sharp, uh, contrast in luminance values and when I click and drag here because we need to select out the sky from our image uh, when I click and drag here we can see that it selects it kind of goes until it finds a nice edge and we're gonna have a really hard time even if I were like really kind of like add and subtract from this I'm holding down the alt key by the way to subtract from my selection so even though it's kind of subtract from my selection I still am gonna have a really hard time I'll press control D to deselect from there and we need to grab, we need to go to the next tool, which is the magic wand. You'll find it underneath the quick selection tool. And what the magic wand does, and I'll press press space bar to kind of drag to my top area of my image. What the magic wand does is if I click, what it will do is it will look for similar luminance values up to the tolerance of 32. So it looks for plus 32, minus 32, and it tries to find luminance values according to that. And you can see here that it's from based on the area that I clicked, it tried to uh, find a selection based on that. If I I'll press deselect, so if I increase my tolerance, and by the way, the easiest way to, uh, to change your tolerance value is to press enter on the numeric keypad and then type a value. I'll go ahead and set it to a much higher value. Let's just try 60. I'll press enter again, and then you'll notice if I click in the same vicinity that I did before, you'll notice that it grabs more of the area. So I've increased its tolerance, and it's gonna keep grabbing more. Uh, I'll go ahead and deselect that as it's grabbing a little bit too much. You don't wanna go too high with this tool, but it really just depends on what you're selecting. I'll go ahead and uh, let's try uh, 20. Now, anti-aliasing here, this will help smooth out some of the values of our selection. So for our purposes, we're gonna leave it on. Um, contiguous will, with contiguous checked on, it will try to find neighboring areas of color. So if I deselect this and I go ahead and click kind of over here, you'll notice that it grabs lots of areas that were not uh, adjacent to one another, especially over here in the bottom left. All right, so we want to leave contiguous checked on, uh, unchecked, and because we want to select all of the blue out of these layers. So I'll go ahead and press deselect and we'll go ahead, let's try about a uh, tolerance of about 30 and I'll go ahead and click in this area. And that's the, kind of the beginning of our selection that we're going to build. And then I'll go ahead and press, hold down the shift key, which will you'll notice up here, it adds to my selection. So then I'm gonna click somewhere over here and um, there's really no magic science to this. It's just kind of trial and error to see what areas get selected and I'll just continue holding down shift and grabbing areas until I am satisfied with the selection. So let's kind of grab here. By the way, more often than not, you end up wanting to uh, add, uh, create a new add point that is within your selection. So I could kind of auto automatically kind of go down here, but if I do that, you can see here, it ends up grabbing way too much stuff. I'll press Control Z to undo that. And let's see if clicking in here, we can see here that the, the, the selection kind of builds up just a little bit and we start to get some nice values in there. And I'll just kind of try, again, there's no exact science to this, it's just kind of trial and error. All right, so it's starting to grab a little bit more than I wanted it to, so I'm gonna press undo. And if I reset my tolerance value, so let's lower it to, let's say, let's try a nice low value of 10. That's pretty low, but we'll try it. And I add to my selection. By the way, tolerance value won't affect your current selection, only things that you add to it. So I'll shift click there, and I have a nice selection around my clouds. So you should see a decent selection if you kind of want to grab some of these other areas. Let's see. Uh, if for any reason you have some areas like up here at the top, you can always alt click them. So alt will subtract from the selection. So if I alt click those, I will deselect from those cloud areas. There we go. All right, this selection is looking pretty good so far. As we kind of discussed in the previous video with the camera, sometimes you can select the background or the foreground depending on which object you wanted. In this case, it was much easier to select the blue of the sky than it would be to select the 
uh, varying luminance values of the clouds, that would be much more difficult. So you'll notice that when I add my mask, and I'll just click at the add a layer mask icon at the bottom of the layers panel, it drops out my sky, but doesn't give me the clouds, right? It's kind of the opposite of what we want. And this is perfectly okay. We simply go to our properties panel and we click the invert button. You can also use the hotkey of control I. And we begin to see some of the problems here. Once again, I'm gonna go and I'm going to create a solid color adjustment layer, make it nice and red so that we can really clearly see some of these problems. And I'll drag that to the bottom there. Yeah, and we can see here that the selection that it created is not perfect. If we really zoom in here, hmm, this is a pretty weird at looking edge. However, the next feature, and this is a very powerful part of Photoshop, if we use Select and Mask, it's going to help clean this up. So we need to make sure that our mask is selected. So if you click the layer thumbnail, you'll notice that there's a, there's a little box around it. We wanna make sure that the mask itself is selected. You can see that um, is selected now by the little brackets around it. And we're going to select uh, select and mask, which you can also find in your properties panel. It's usually in a couple of different areas. It's also under select and select and mask here. All right, so whichever way you decide to grab it, go ahead and use select and mask. And that will bring up this new dialog box. Now by default, I believe it's uh, probably set to on layers, uh, something like that. And uh, this will work for us, but you do have different view options here. Um, you could set it to overlay, and I believe by default it has the opacity set to 50%, and we can increase that if you want. So there are different view options in here. Let's go ahead and leave it to on layers because we did already create that solid color adjustment layer. If you forgot to create that solid color adjustment layer, you can simply select overlay and change the opacity, and you'll get the same effect. Now, a lot of these options, uh, it's a little bit beyond the scope of this uh, tutorial to go into these things too much in depth, but we can talk a little bit about, especially the one that we're really going to use, which is radius. And we're gonna come back to this tool because you generally wanna use selected mask with almost about every selection you make because it's, it's really just that good of a tool. Sometimes you don't need it here and there, but in general, it always improves your selection. It, unless you really crank these values up too hard, it rarely ever creates a problem. So if I start to drag my radius value up here, and I kind of give it a second to render. We can see here it's already started to clean that collect that selection up quite a bit. We no longer see that artifacts and stuff like that. What radius value does is it looks around the edge of the selection, four pixels to the top of the selection and four pixels down to it, and we'll start to do some edge detection to try and find that edge. All right, and for our purposes, if we really start to crank this value up quite a bit, we can see here it's going to give us a nice smooth edge around our clouds. I'll press control minus to zoom out a little bit and space bar. If we see a little bit of haloing around these clouds, that's okay. We just wanted to make sure that it's not getting, we want to set low enough value that it's not getting too much into the mountains there. All right, and this is looking pretty good. So I'll click okay. If you give it a second, it should render out our selection. Let's go ahead and delete our color fill layer. We no longer need it. We're gonna work from this image. This image will be, will be the basis of our composite image. So let's go ahead and drop in the night sky that we have available to us. So I'm gonna to go to File, Place, Place Embedded. You're going to select the Unsplash image by uh, Dino, I'm not gonna sure if I'm gonna pronounce that, Reichmuth. And that's the image that we're going to select. So File, Place. All right, if we give that a second, I'll press Control zero to kind of zoom out. It will begin as a smart object and ask us to transform that image. Handily, it uh, fits pretty well. And I'll press Enter to commit that change. Of course, right now it's in the foreground and I want it in the background, so I'm gonna click and drag that image behind my other image. And I'll press V to grab my Move tool and we're going to reposition that image, uh, adjusting it up and down to taste. Now there's some nice things about this image, like there's this kind of mountain that kind of goes back in the background, and that's looking pretty good like so. And if we kind of look here, it smoothed out the edges in a nice fashion. All right, in the next video, we'll start bringing in some of the other images that we dropped out, as well as doing some color adjustments and some finalization of our image to kind of blend everything together.